15,000 years ago, a human animal painted this image upon a dark cave wall. It represents an idea which humans of that time intimately understood, but which today has largely been forgotten. This is the idea of a mythical solidarity between hunter and hunted. Through paint and stone, our ancestors remind us that eater and eaten are one. As you watch this video, hold this image in your mind. It's a reminder of where we came from. This is where we are now. We are instinctively drawn to these chimerical images, but the concrete caves that we live in today have obscured their original meaning. What was once a mythic solidarity between hunter and hunted has become a historic divide between human and wild. The wilderness used to be the entire world. Now we keep it in a box. This is the box of wilderness closest to where I live, in the city of Binghamton. Binghamton has a deer problem. Centuries ago, we expelled the wolves from the forest, leaving the deer with no natural predators. As you might expect, this has led to an unprecedented growth in the deer population. The Binghamton University Nature Preserve has a very distinct browse line. You don't see green leaves anywhere below five feet above the ground because the deer eat them all. That means there are no wildflowers, no bushes, and critically, no saplings. In a healthy forest, as trees grow old and die, they fall and are replaced by younger saplings. But that doesn't happen in this forest because all the young saplings are eaten by the deer before they get a chance to mature. If nothing is done about this, the forest will disappear within a century. And so, the deer population needs to be reduced. But let's not mince words here. Reducing the population means death, killing, with blood and guns. And then, it means eating. Engaging in this cycle of killing and eating contradicts our idea of what wild means. A petition titled, Urgent! Stop the Senseless Killing of Deer at Binghamton University, reads, A nature preserve should remain untouched and allowed to evolve naturally without human intervention. In our society, there is a deep dichotomy between what is human and artificial on the one hand, and what is wild and natural on the other. It is all too easy to think, our cities are too big, our concrete walls are too thick. We need to stay out of what's left of nature in order to keep it as pristine as possible. But the problem with this sort of thinking is that it inadvertently puts nature in a box. It only serves to reinforce the profound separation that we feel between ourselves and the natural world. Deer antlers protrude from this sorcerer's head, and a foxtail dances with his genitals. In the mythical time that this shaman was alive, the entire world was wild, and so any distinction between man and beast was meaningless. In this undifferentiated state, our ancestors experienced, without ever really understanding, the complicated truth that modern ecologists have spent decades trying to uncover. The world is intricately and irreducibly connected, which is to say, there is a mythical solidarity between humanity and nature. It's natural to want to close our eyes to the grotesqueness of killing, but to do so is to deny the existence of the cycles of life and death that we are inexorably a part of. To deny this cycle, to focus on certain empathetic creatures like humans or deer instead of the whole, is to inadvertently cause an even more grotesque kind of killing. Ecosystem collapse. It's time to look death in the eye and recall the messages that our ancestors left in their paintings. 
There is a mythical solidarity between those who eat and those who are eaten, because life and death are inexorably intertwined. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I really hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, and especially if you live in Binghamton and have an opinion on this little local deer issue, please let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, maybe even post it on your Facebook or your Twitter or whatever you've got. Uh, this video is really meant to be a part of a larger conversation, and I'm really curious to hear what you think. So let me know. Okay, thanks. I'll see you later. Bye.